Hi, this is Jury's Doctor. Let's go kill some things. This is Riding 101. So, when you go killing in space, do you start with PvP, or do you fight things in the environment? In EVE Online, there are multiple classes of enemies you can fight. Inevitably, one of the first ones that you will engage with are pirates found in missions or in anomaly. These NPC characters, or non-player characters, can be found in all regions of space and can be found in lots of places, but anomalies, anomalies and missions are typically the first places you will encounter them. Factions exist within these various uh, NPC threats, and I'll go over those now. There's the Angel Cartel basically criminal organization operating in the same ways today as drug cartels. They're drug runners, weapons dealers, muscle, assassins. They operate controlling everything from prostitution to weapons dealing. The Blood Raiders, a terrorist organization religiously motivated, operating under the belief that blood is close to God, and so bathing in the blood of your enemies is the best way to get close to the blood god. Then there's the Rogue Drones, an existential threat to all life in New Eden. They are either the remainders of prior AI left behind as guardians by previous um, civilizations that have existed in space, or as new emergent AI coming from advanced robotics and uh, lesser AI that have deviated from their code. We don't know what their motives are or why they're doing what they're doing. We just know that they're out there building something in the dark. And then there's the Garistas. The Garistas are a pirate organization operating on the typical model of piracy. Steal, blow things up, kill whoever gets in the way. Then there's the Equilibrium of Mankind, the EOM. The EOM exists as an organization that believes that mankind should never have left its home system. That by coming through the Eve Gate into New Eden, we've deviated from our destiny and our purpose, and we must return to it. These guys are crazy nutjobs. Then there's Mordu's Legion. If you were to combine the um, Vatican Guard and the French Foreign Legion and give them the budget of an organization like Microsoft, you might be getting close to Mordu's Legion. This is a military state unto itself, led by a despot who is a genius tactician. The ships commanded by his forces are the envy of capsuleers everywhere, and frequently used by capsuleer corporations who have the money to afford them. Then there's the Sanchez Nation. Sanchez Nation began as an idealist, utopian objective to build a society without war or conflict or deviation. To achieve this, the cybernetically enhanced elite within the society, a faction of their meritocracy augmented themselves with cybernetics and then forcefully implanted their citizens with slave control chips that robbed them of their will and their individuality, essentially turning them into space zombies. Nasty, nasty people to mess with. They are not to be trifled with. Then there's the Serpentis. The Serpentis operate ostensibly as a legitimate corporate interest. They own stations, are engaged by many corporations as well as nations and factions in the production of ships, uh, advanced cybernetics, medicine, biochemistry, and so on. They also operate predominantly as a pharmacological corporation and as drug dealers. They are the Cluster's largest producer of illicit drugs, and the Serpentis Corporation routinely employs the Angel Cartel for protection of their assets and illicit operations. Each of the various factions will deal damage and take damage of a specific type. 
The Angels, for example, deal predominantly explosive damage and are weak to the same. Blood Raiders deal EM and are also weak to the same. This holds true for all of the factions except for the Drones, which deal explosive and are weak to EM. An interesting one among these, however, is that if you look at most of these, you'll find they have a ship design type with a weapon damage type that will correspond. So the Garistas fly Kaldari looking the ships, and uh, ships that are based genuinely on Kaldari designs, and thereby deal kinetic damage. The EOM, however, fly Amar ships, which you would expect to deal EM damage with lasers. However, they are not dealing EM damage. They fire a mix of blasters, railguns, and missiles, and thereby deal kinetic damage. When looking for rats to kill for money, your NPC enemies will be found in anomalies first and foremost. These anomalies have different levels of difficulty, beginning at the hideaways in high sec and sanctums in no sec. Sanctums are very difficult, typically, you know, staged in more, one or more rooms with multiple waves of enemies, averaging in size between battleships and battle cruisers, with a few small waves of frigate. Whereas in a hideaway, Almost all of your enemies will be frigates with the possibility of a couple of destroyers spawning. The higher in security status the system you are in is, the weaker the enemies are likely to be. Drones have their own naming convention for their sites. The site names are always faction name followed by the name of the site. So a Sh Sansha's Refuge or a Serpentis Hideaway will be the type of names that you'll see in your probe scanner. These are also sometimes prefixed by an adjective, so a Sancho's Hidden Hideaway will be more difficult than a hideaway, with correspondingly tougher rats and more of them to kill. By the same logic, an Angel's Forsaken Den will be two to three times more difficult than a standard Angel's Den. Pay attention to the names of the sites that you're warping to before you go in, so that you can make your own decisions about where you want to land and how you want to control damage you're dealing on the field. Typically, when you're PvE, or player versus environment, grinding or killing rats if you prefer, You'll want to use a ship that can fit a good tank, deal a decent amount of damage, and doesn't have to worry too much about capacitor. A good example of this is the Vexor Navy issue. The Vexor Navy issue also has the advantage that you can field a full flight of heavy, mid, and light drones and use drones for your damage, alternating drone types depending upon which targets you're firing on. The great thing about the Vexor is it simply shows up on the field, poops out a bunch of drones, and lets those drones do the damage. When getting out into ratting, you will typically just get out into space, open your probe scanner, and find the nearest combat site that you can warp to. These combat sites can also be scanned down from cosmic signatures, and typically those will be a different type of combat site, but not always. Let's take a look at what uh, ratting looks like. I'm going to take out my Gila and show you some ratting. So this is the Gila, this is the Garista's version of the MOA, and this cruiser gets the benefit of having a 500% bonus to medium drone hit points and damage. The Gila gets the disadvantage of only being able to field two medium drones at a time, but having a hold phone certainly doesn't hurt. Now when you get out into space, you're going to find yourself with your probe scanner. By default, the probe scanner is going to launch linked to the solar system map, like so. How you separate it from the solar system map is simply to click this button and then drag it down to any other window or to its own space. I typically like to fly with my probe scanner and directional scanner together 
And you don't really need to use your solar system map to use the probe scanner effectively. Mostly you're looking at these icons here, meaning that these are combat sites. You can fly to ore sites, they will have rats, but it's unlikely to spawn very difficult rats. And in Faction Warfare Space, you will find that these outpost sites, these combat sites, are Faction Warfare sites. <coughs> faction Warfare will be covered in a different video. So for now, I'm just going to check out the asteroid belts and this asteroid ore site just to make sure that there aren't any rats I can't kill. Now, the great thing about anomalies is you can simply warp directly to them. Warp drive active. And then simply begin engaging any targets you find. This type of routing is typically called belt routing because you're looking for enemies in asteroid belts or, or anomalies. Now here at this specific ore anomaly, we can see that the current enemy type is drones. This is a drone bunker, and it's likely that they're only going to spawn when I get close, if at all. If I like, I can attempt to poke the beehive to see if I can get some drones to spawn. Whether or not they respond is entirely up to the programming of the game and its particular scripts. This might be a little bit more effort than I want, so I'm simply going to go on to an asteroid belt. Warp drive active. And we can tell by the wrecks that have been found here that somebody's already been mining in this belt, probably using drones for defense. Warp drive. So I'll move on. And here we go, some rats. So to begin engaging, all I need to do is launch my drones. And in this case, I don't even really need to work that hard to begin shooting these enemies because I'm using auto-targeting missiles. With auto-targeting missiles, the missiles will automatically begin firing upon the enemy without needing a target lock, the disadvantage being that you don't get to see how much hit points are left. But you can see that the uh, the missiles are doing an effective amount of damage. Yeah, 
And there we go. So when you're out in space and you find yourself fighting some Serpentas, or perhaps some rogue drones, or maybe their big brother, the rogue drone battleship, well, you're just going to blow them up. That's the objective. Maybe you find yourself warping to an asteroid belt. That asteroid belt will have enemies in it. Maybe he brings his buddies. Well, regardless, your objective is still quite the same. Blow them up. Ooh, blue explosion. Sometimes, though, when you get that blue explosion or you blow them up, you'll get a notification pop up on your screen. You've found an escalation. Escalations are unique storyline driven events that will drive you to a unique combat site that will spawn within a few systems of where you're presently located. It's very rare for them to spawn in the same system you're in, but it does happen. What will happen is you'll have a new journal entry appear in your journal, showing you where this is and giving you the ability to set a course to that escalation. Escalations are numbered based on difficulty from 1 through 10. 10 out of 10s are very difficult to run, and I recommend that you do not try doing them until you're a somewhat more skilled pilot. A fully skilled Tengu pilot can solo them um, if they know what they're doing. 10 out of 10 escalations are a great way for new players to make money by selling those escalations to people who have the time and skills and ship class to run them effectively. Another type of enemy you'll find is that when you're out in space and you find yourself in an asteroid belt, particularly in Nullsec in Faction Warfare space or Losec, you'll find clone soldiers. No, not the clone soldiers you find in Star Wars, but the type that will warp you, warp scram, disrupt and web you and kill you. They are very, very capable ships and when you engage them you definitely want to blow them up as quickly as possible. Another type of engagement you may find in ratting, although one that I would recommend only if you are extremely experienced or have a group of friends to help you, is mining fleets. All throughout New Eden since the inception launch you will find mining fleets actively mining, which are not piloted by player characters, not piloted by somebody sitting behind a computer screen. And when you engage them, blowing them up, they will respond with their own mining defense fleets. And these mining defense fleets operate very much like PCs. Like player characters, they will bring their own Lodgy, E-War support, tackle, and damage dealing ships. So be very careful when you're engaging those, otherwise you might get hurt. Here's a few resources you should check out in the form of DED content creators to watch on YouTube, of course. One of the first ones and obvious mentions is Johnny Pugh. Definitely check out Johnny's page as well, the Lone Wolf. These two gentlemen together I think have created more DED walkthroughs than anybody else playing EVE. I would highly, highly recommend that you subscribe to both of their channels as soon as possible. And also Wingspan TT. Now, he does of course offer his torpedo delivery service, but in addition to that you will find some good exploration and ratting content on his page and the videos are extremely well commented. I highly recommend that you add him as well. And you know, in addition to these three big names, there's also some smaller names that I'll give a shout out to. Rushlock and the Blood Raid. Now these last two gentlemen, I've provided bit.ly links to make it easy for you to find their YouTube pages. You can also just search for their names. Uh, gentlemen, Rushlock and Blood Raid, if you're watching this, please claim your unique YouTube identifiers. You'll find that on your video management page. In all of these gentlemen's pages, please just search DED in their channels by clicking on Videos and then on the magnifying glass and type in DED in all caps, hit Enter, and you'll find the corresponding video you're looking for, or multiples. Seriously, these artists are great content creators and I highly, highly recommend that you follow them. We uh, content creators really should stick together and I hope 
that if you found this video useful, that you will, of course, like, share, and subscribe this video and recommend me to your friends. Thank you so much.